right, 403 according to my, uh, my computer. Um, I see it's recording, so let's start. That's good. April 27th, 2020, GBOS special meeting regarding the 2019 budget review. Um, announcements, public is encouraged to ask questions and provide comment. Please raise your hand via Zoom and wait to be acknowledged. GBOS seat E is open for appointment. Interested candidates should send a cover letter and resume to GBOS via email um, as listed in the meeting packet and agenda. GBOS 2021 nonprofit recreation grant applications are available May the 1st to June the 19th. Applications will be available online. Our webpage. Um, roll call. Um, Mike Edgington, co-chair and land use supervisor. Jerry Fox, co-chair and public safety supervisor. Aaron Boone, fire department supervisor. Okay. Um, any disclosures? I don't think so. Not for me. Okay, let's move on to the agenda. Any revisions to the agenda? Anybody wants? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Sorry, Aaron. No, none for me. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Okay. Um, I think by consent, unless I hear any objections. Okay, on to business. Number one, discuss and assign parks and rec role to one of the supervisors. So I will start and say, I think Rhodes probably has a bunch of work to do and land use we're still having meetings. So uh, I don't know if uh, police, I think PSAC is now once a quarter. Correct. Um, and uh, fire department is probably the same about once a quarter. So I would happily assign it to one of you two. <laughs> um, what's going on with roads? I think it's just the, 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 there's nothing specific. It's just the general approval and the, uh, and I think there's still some complaints and concerns about roads, which go to the supervisor right here. Mm -hmm. Carl can probably say more. Well, yeah. I, I'll, I'll say something, you know, this next year, you know, as when we get into roles, we're going to have a new contract. So there will be thing to do. Right, Kyle? I'll let you yeah. after. We're going to, we're actually going to try to bid that this summer so okay. that we have a contractor established before uh, winter hits. But it, uh, on our current schedule, we're going to have someone else probably in seat uh, in CT by June. Correct. So Absolutely. assuming we get applicants and I think we will get applicants and we may already have applicants. I don't know. Have you received anyone yet, anything yet, Kyle? We haven't heard anything yet, no. Okay, I think we will do. I've heard at least two people are interested. Okay. Um, the, so we're really only talking about the next two months. Yeah, and really, I mean, there aren't a lot of meetings going on as far as Parks and Rec, no. so. Um, are are I, trails formal, have trails decided not to meet at all? Yeah, they have, uh, yep, we presented to the last one and they only want to meet if it's critical. Okay. Let me ask this question. You know, I don't, I don't think Aaron or I mind probably doing it, but does it lead us into then having to do it via Parks and Recs person for all next year? Oh, so. You're the two most senior people on the board, so if you want to, you can. But you're not going <laughs> to. Uh, you're not going to end up doing it unless you want to do it. <laughs> we reappoint. Aaron, I'll do it. You're yeah. working. You're working. <laughs> okay. I don't know how I get. Carol always laughs when I get assigned all this stuff. <laughs> you just because you're retired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tired, not. <laughs> retired, tired. That just means no, tired I'll again, doesn't it? Retired. <laughs> so, with that overwhelming enthusiasm, uh, <laughs> Gary is uh, also taking on Parks and Rec, the Parks and Rec role until we reassign roles when the new supervisor is appointed. Excellent. Sounds good. Thanks, Thank Jerry. Thank you very much, Jerry. Appreciate it. Yep. 
Number two, review of budget areas for GBOS from 2019. I'll hand this over to Kyle. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share a file here. Hi, Michelle. All right, can you guys all see that? Yep. Okay, so starting with order of the agenda, we'll go with fire first. Um, and so this is what we see from our side uh, with uh, how the payments are given to the contract. Um, and so this is uh, Excel draw out from SAP um, and uh, gives you an idea of where we go. So. Um, as you can see, we started the year with the, the first line is the original budget. And then um, as we made changes uh, through the year, you can see what happened over there um, uh, with it. So the, the two main uh, expenses uh, with this contract um, that are within the service areas control really, uh, one is, is, is the contract itself, which was 793000 um, due to storage last year, we had to use some of the money left over from the repair and supply maintenance, um, which was all approved by you um, in, in uh, I think, December. Um, and so it made the total contract cost this year 829000 uh, there um, in, in that area. And so with moving those monies around, um, we ended up with... 854,000 in actuals. So uh, I haven't had a chance to look into this and, and ask, but um, for some reason we were 25,000 over there compared to what we actually had available in the budget um, there. So I don't know with that, sometimes this can be accounting magic um, that explains that, uh, but that's, that's what it shows there um, in that aspect. Oh, I know why, excuse me. It's because of the contract service line. So. Overall, we're 858,000 um, in that area. And, um, and so 99% of that budget was spent. Uh, so I'm getting it now, sorry. <laughs> well, let's go back. The, what we approved for the contract cost was 829,000 plus 30,000 for the maintenance and essentially came in exactly about the same as that number. They had to use the maintenance cost to, to um, or offset the overrun on the contract labor. Correct, correct? And, 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 a, and a portion of the uh, 406 contribution um, was supposed to go to that too, so. Um, Is that the 36,000? That would have been the 36,000 there. Right. Yep, yep, yep. In, our, in your budgets, you approved uh, actually moving up 25,000 from the um, repair fund and then 35,000 from the uh, 406 contribution uh, towards it uh, there. And, and within that, the um, in 2020, we're, we're supposed to figure out how that contribution was going to be reimbursed from the revenues um, that were collected in 2019. Right. And then I asked, I asked AFD to, on Friday if they had got that ready for us to be able to encumber, and they haven't got back to me yet. So uh, um, that is the non-labor contract and contribution costs along those lines. Uh, before I move down, is there any questions there? Yes, that contribution to other funds line. Yes. Uh, I don't understand what that, I'm, I don't understand what that means. It went from 74 to 278. That's the normally the, the uh, contribution to the 406. Right, which was 74, but then it jumped up to 278. That's the bit that doesn't make sense. Do you know, Michelle, is that, is that money that came in from uh, services that you're waiting for revenue on? No, it, it shouldn't be 204. That would be awfully high. Um, no, I don't you know. You actually reduced that. that. I, don't, I don't know what that number is. 
Yes. 204. But 204 yes. sounds almost like our EMS, very wide EMS. Yes. Right? It's very close to the 209 number. Or is that the two? Is that the two forty in um, direct cost modified accrual? No, I don't know. That, that's a that's a question I'll ask. Yeah, because right now it's showing that there was two hundred seventy eight thousand put into that four hundred six account. Which there was supposed to be only seventy four thousand. Right, no, and, and then we reduced that. Nothing in, so there shouldn't be there shouldn't be a giant contribution like that. Yeah. 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 So I guess that's. <laughs> complaining though that looks lovely <laughs> be complaining if you spend it and then have to return it <laughs> so i think that's the question we'll have to figure out what that line means what's going on there with that accounting so at the at the end of it where it says 100 percent utilized that means it was moved somewhere i know so maybe this meant Maybe the 204 was the number of uh, 406 money that we encumbered, like for the air packs and for the- Oh yes, that's a good point. Yep, that would make sense because they would have moved it into your operating budget to pay for oh. it. Oh, yep. yep. Got it. So that's probably okay. the air packs right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, that's air packs and, and compressor. That's you know, I don't have it open right now, but uh, what I'll do is I'll go look at it because I can click on these individually and it tells me what what was paid out with those so yeah that, that looks that looks almost the amount so that's that's definitely what that is yeah okay i'll confirm that but i think that is the air packs yeah. good pitch that, that would be that would make sense because that because you would you're taking more out than you put in yes yeah so i'm confused as to where the reduction in um 406 money is reflected in this That's a good point. Yeah, I think I think the fact that that there was it was supposed to be a contribution of that, and then the actuals was everything that was taken out, the seventy four thousand, or well, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't know. Let me play with that. I'll see if I can. Uh, let me see here. I'm just trying to get to my homepage. Um, cause I might be able to log into SAP. Unfortunately, I'm on my, I'm on my, uh, I'm on my laptop. I don't have the SAP login. So I'll look at that. Cause what they might've done is just paid instead of paying the contribution, um, to, uh, to them, um, or, or moving the contribution up into the non-labor. They might have just paid it directly out of that contribution line to the fire department, and so yeah. it with within that seventy four thousand uh, thirty six thousand of that would have been paid directly to the fire right. department. And Catch left. that number above. Yeah, yep. and then the, yeah. yeah, I don't know why it didn't show, but you know, yeah. I'll ask. Yeah, so so it's showing as an adjustment in budget. Yes. Yep. So I'll find out what happened there. So we're expecting to get uh, reimbursed the thirty six thousand. Is that right? Yes. And, um, and so and so I asked them about it on Friday. So there should be we should have. Uh, so I know of thirty six thousand, but then there also should be some out of area billing uh, for like when we went on giant bonfires in Bird, uh, and then mm -hmm. there should be uh, a couple other th like false alarm billing. Uh, so, uh, for false alarms in Girdwood, uh, which really primarily, primarily is one commercial building owner. Uh, and so there should be some of that money coming in, but they haven't, what I asked for is, could you give me the breakdown? They're supposed to be sending it to me before they send it out, but they haven't. Um, so the city of Whittier just got a bill for 76,000, 77,600, but, uh, we don't know what it's for. So, um, I'm still trying to get back information. A AFD kind of, they're working, they're not, they're all kind of working remotely, some of them, and uh, it's hard to get financial information at the moment because they're focused on COVID. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I have lots of questions into them, so. And just contract services. So just to go back, I have my 2019 
budget in front of me. And it looks like we approved $867,121. And so I'm, yeah, I don't know how that works. <laughs> That's weird. What was it? you said? You said you have a number of what? Um, there was eight hundred and sixty-seven thousand one hundred and twenty-one dollars that we approved for contract services, and the thirty thousand for supplies. Right. Which case is the eight um, eight ninety-seven one twenty-one? Correct. Right contract cost modified yes. accrual. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. On line 14, that's... On line 14, yes. Yeah, that's, that's what we number. approved. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, it's a little confusing. Well, and the IGCs look like they were over, too, a little bit. Yeah. The IGCs are over by about 10,000, don't they? Yeah. And I asked, I asked Chief Hetrick about that in lieu of, you know, ahead of this meeting. And she, I said, are they going to be the same? Or are they going to change by 10,000 this next year? And she said, no, they're going to be the same. It's not going to change. So anyway, that's what I was told. So I don't know if this is the right time to talk about it, but um, for this year, um, you know, the idea was that we would have this uh, contract talks and we would get a bigger number and that would help your budget. So since that isn't happening, how are you doing? Um, I'm waiting to get my last uh, this month. Um, I, we, we're not having any calls, right? So yeah. we're having very few calls and we're doing telefirefighting where you call 911 and then we call you and FaceTime with you and say, is it, is it really an alarm chirping? Show me, it's FaceTime. So um, it's kind of weird. Um, so I, I should be able to tell you it within a week of where we are right now. Um, I don't know where, I don't have the exact number where we are. Part of what we're doing is we're pushing basically all of Mansion My costs to, and the safety officers costs to the COVID, to COVID. So we're trying to get one or two months of salary and everything pushed to that, which I think should make the, our budget look pretty good. Um, we're still having the, um, we're still having training nights. We're doing it telephonically and then bringing a whole bunch of people or we're video conferencing and then we're bringing uh, small groups in within the mandated limit to practice putting on all the COVID PPE. Um, uh, so we're still having those costs. So those aren't changing, but what is like drastically down is the run volume. Although in the last day that's picked up again. So the last two days it's been pretty busy. So we're, so we're back to like two calls a day. Um, or, you know, more. So I can only see that it's going to pick up, but we did have like a month and a half of no calls or few calls um, where it would have normally been our busiest time. So I think that's going to be a good cost savings for us. And then especially if we can push those two months of, of a lot of wages to um, COVID, I think it might be all okay. At least that's my, that's my positive thinking. So, so. Oh, Fewer so out-of-state drivers on the sewer this summer as well. I think there's going to be tons of drivers on the sewer though, right? Fewer out-of-state drivers. Oh yeah, fewer out-of-state drivers, but the same amount of Girdwood drive, you know. Or more. Yeah. Or more, yeah. Um, so, and then I asked Chief Hetrick a bunch of questions about, you know, were they going to, were the, is there the mayor thinking of a tax break that would cause us to have less revenue, less money available? for a fire service area next year. And she said, no. I asked her, what are we gonna do? Because obviously area-wide EMS revenues are down and part of that's credited back to area-wide EMS to supplement the, um, the money, the uh, taxpayer money. And she said, no, it's not gonna matter. It's gonna be fine. And plus there's some COVID relief money. Um, that's the magical federal government money. Um, so, when I, when I was expressing concern about budgeting and everything uh, last week, because I was very concerned, um, basically I've been told everything is going to be okay. So that's what I've been told. And contract negotiations are still on hold and- They are, but I, I mean, we're kind of in a glide path right now. So 
it wouldn't be necessarily bad to start them up again. Um, AFD's had a bunch of uh, personnel changes, uh, but it wouldn't be bad to start them up again. Um, they're, not, they're now anticipating that our next highest, busiest week is going to be that third week of May. Um, they figure we'll have a lot more COVID patients then because it would have been, you know, two weeks since everybody's gone out and talked to each other. Um, and so right before the long weekend is where, where they're expecting us to be get super busy again. So if we don't, um, it seems like there might be an opportunity to start negotiations again. We're definitely not doing the 16 hour days like we were doing there for a month and a half for six weeks. So we're kind of, we're back to, this is the first, second, I would say the second week that we're scaling back to more of a 40 hour or, you know, 50 or 60 hour, whatever we work normally operation. So for a command staff. Thanks. And Michelle, the next step was for, um, for us to meet with the board, right? To talk about numbers. Yes. And then three of the board were leaving. I think now two of the board are leaving. Um, and I'm not sure if they, I know they put it out for uh, additional board members because they had no luck getting board members. So I think that's also sort of swirling around too. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I have to go. There's something beeping at me. I'll still be within ear range, but I'll just be gone a second. You can FaceTime if it's a fire alarm. <laughs> you can. That's how we do it. <laughs> I had mine going off after the power cut yesterday. I had mine going off, and when I checked it, I realized I put one of the batteries in backwards. So there was no battery backup on it. <laughs> All those years at university doing electrical electronic engineering, and I can't put batteries in correctly. But you get a free pass once. <laughs> That's my one, yeah. Well, I am admitting it. That's why the power went out. They wanted to show you that. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, any more questions with this budget? Just to wrap up, we ended up with this budget, and uh, because of IGCs, we were 10000 over on this one. So... Um, but as we go through the next ones, we'll, we'll, we make up that for the overall for, for, for the budget. So th this doesn't show any income because nothing was charged last year? Because but they hadn't set it up yet. Right. Okay. I'm just wondering in future, where would we see the income? Uh, That's the problem. Oh. Go ahead. That's the problem we've seen with SAP is they don't show the income levels on the operating budgets. And okay. So I've had the same question and um, in like Michelle, I haven't got a direct response on it yet. So I will, okay. I will look into it. But on this, we wouldn't, accept, we wouldn't expect to see an income on last year's because it hadn't been set up. Yeah, but, but we should, like on old PeopleSoft, we used to be able to show the revenue, right? So you could, act, you could actually see if your revenues were trending what you said you were rev, budgeting for your right. revenues, so you could actually see it. So it's weird that they can't show it. It makes no sense that they can't show it. Yeah, the SAP version doesn't show it, and I think I have to go look somewhere else. So I got to figure out how to find that now. So this, the, the whole SAP thing is not intuitive at all. So it's prettier. Uh, well, yeah, it, when it gets a report. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're in it, it's just like, I swear it's the Germans getting back at us. So um, <laughs> New York, it's the German software. So anyway. Kyle, we feel your pain. Jerry and I have use that in our past careers <laughs> yeah somebody's a good salesman on this whole thing to sell the systems so yeah <laughs> all right any more questions with the fire no okay we'll move over to police okay i'll get off now then all right thanks michelle Bye. Thanks, michelle. thanks this one should be easier yes this one's straightforward uh but still clunky uh because they um, the way they align the numbers, like for example, other professional services this is the number I got from them. And then they put it down. So when we make payments, they make it out of contracted services. So it, it, it's just not clean to me. I don't like it that way. Anyways, the way. Right. We're so, so, uh, with, uh, non-labor contract expenses and other miscellaneous costs, uh, we came in $2,600 under budget with this one. Uh, it's mostly because we didn't use up the full 5,000 miscellaneous uh, because uh, we had towing free for a good part of the year last year. Um, and uh, we used that and then uh, we just didn't, 
have any other purchases that we thought we would uh, possibly in that area. Uh, one of the biggest purchases that we did have under that con uh, that line was that we rented those signs for two weeks during fire season, and it came out of this budget. Those portable signs that said "Fire Danger." Um, those were about a thousand bucks a week, so um, so that that worked out there um, for those. But yep, pretty straightforward with this budget. Uh, there are some small IGCs with this that we pay mostly for purchasing, um, but uh, yep, there's just there's that. So um, one thing that we I need to work on this right now to make sure it happens uh, or just confirm that it's happening is that we are um, right now going to be getting a reduced rental rate uh, from ACS because we've paid off our improvements over there for the last three years. Um, that contract started in April of the first year of the contract. And so we'll, we should see that going down by half um, going into this year. We've accounted so, the, so the rental costs, are they coming, are they being charged to communications? Yeah, so that's, that's the funny thing about it was that they thought, because when ACS bills for it, they bill on the same format as your ACS telephone yeah. bill. And so, um, I had to explain it to the ladies in Anchorage that it's actually not an ACS bill. It's a, it's a rental. And they said, okay, yep. we'll just leave it where it is for now. And you know that, and uh, we'll, we'll go forward with that. For now. So I, I'm unclear where these, um, where the sign rental is then. Oh, the sign rental, it, it's down. It, it, it's what happened is, is that they didn't, they made a contracted services other. Down. Right. And so the sign rentals came out of that 5,000, which, which then, instead of paying the, when they made the payments, instead of doing other professional services where they originally signed it, they were making the payments down there, and then the sign rentals um, were were coming out above. And so there's only 515 here, so I think they might have uh, crossed that up a little bit with the 870 dollars in there. Okay, right. So, so maybe it was charged in two different places at different times. Yeah. Yeah, it okay. depends because sometimes there's two accountants doing this and then they assign it to different spots. So, so. net net, we paid about half of um, we paid about half of our expected amount for other services plus the full cost of rental and uh, professional and the contract itself. Correct, correct. But, so we ended up with a surplus of twenty seven thousand dollars there. Twenty seven hundred dollars there, and um, so we used ninety nine percent of the budget in that aspect. Right. This one's one of the simplest budgets we have. Good, any questions with police? Good, all right, I'll move on to uh, roads, streets. Okay, so this uh, right here is uh, streets. Uh, the first portion I'll talk about is the labor. So this is expenses for um, both Margaret and I um, for the year. Um, some of the calculations they made for like accrual, uh, like the annual leave taken or accrual modifications um, were a little bit over, but the biggest one over was the, um, and that, that works itself out as you can see up above because when we use, when we, we take leave, they charge it to this line, they charge it to the leave line and then the straight labor doesn't get charged. Right. Um, but then the biggest over was the medical. And so they seem to have that calculation wrong when they estimated it. And we were 16,000 over on the medical um, and dental benefits. So um, I haven't actually compared that yet to see if they corrected that for this year, but it's always something to keep aware of if they're, if they're shooting low, because I, I think our medical costs are pretty much the similar, similar, if not more this year. So we'll see, see what they've done there. That, those are all calculated by um, human resources and payroll together and they usually they, we, we have no control with those numbers hmm. uh, they seem a little high even for alaska it seems like a, for two of us i guess i don't know you know yeah i mean you're talking oh that's for the pair of you yes of course yes of course. Yeah, both, two uh, full-time people yeah i was thinking yeah. that's about double what i'd expect but yes that's right <laughs> for two people it would be yep. in our families so yes yes um, so, uh, we're 11,000 over on non-labor, on labor expenses. And then as we get down in here, here's our non-labor expenses in this middle section. Um, 
And so um, what you see here, the first one is operating supplies, which is, is uh, uh, basically things that I'll buy for operations. That can be anywhere from a, a, a whole super sack of, uh, of asphalt patch to road signs or cones and things like that. And so um, I try to keep that, I actually, purposely have that get put into the operating supply so I can understand what's going on there, but I'm using the, the repair and maintenance supply budget line um, to help fund that. So you can see down there, we spent 38,000 of that line, but 16,000 plus, uh, or add 16,000 that goes towards that budget. It just gives me a sense, that way when I, it's easy for me to go back to that category and look at different costs on different items when I dig deep into that to find out what we paid for it that year, instead of it getting into a very long sheet, which kind of gets overwhelming to look through. through. So, so uh, Kyle, do you, when you purchase things, do you code it? Um, do you decide how it gets coded? I do, which? yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. These are the things that I purchase on my credit card. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, I usually have some input with the accountants as to the way things could, should, will be coded if they're paying it for me by check. Um, or, or money transfer or something like that, however they may do it there. But for the most part, I all the supplies that we get here um, that are under $2,500, I buy with the credit card, uh, the mm -hmm. P card as we call it, the purchase card. So, so I tend to do it that way. Um, you can see our office supply expenses there. Um, I don't know why this didn't get put in here, but we did have this accounted for in the budgets that we gave you, but the media, multimedia resources, that was the bill that we paid to uh, Glacier uh, Gazette um, there, uh, which you know made me think, when did Glacier Gazette go out of business? Last we paid, November, November. Yeah, they stopped November. publishing about November time. Yeah, because we did pay for a full year of advertising. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'll follow that up, but you know, so. Uh, and there's expenses uh, like fuel and things like that, so. Um, you can see there that they actually split the fuel between two areas, gasoline issues and fuel uh, expenses there. Um, and that could be me too. Actually, we have codes within our uh, accounting system and I might just chose the road co wrong code number, but they, they relate to each other uh, in that aspect. And then um, with also with repair and maintenance supplies, uh, we will buy like, um, calcium chloride, uh, recycled asphalt uh, out of that budget and, and use that there um, in that aspect. Um, this year I had to do something for 5,000 bucks and I don't have that in front of me right now, but it was environmental services. And that might've been a survey or some soil testing that we had to have completed um, as part of our DEC permit. Um, so that, that expense is there um, in that aspect. One thing that they did wrong this year is that they, um, and this was Jessica, she was new accountant for us. She was charging um, our lawn mowing services to our road street account. Um, and and um, once we got started with it, I told her just to stay there uh, because the journal entries to reassign it was difficult. Um, so I just said, just stay there. I'll watch the budget and, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll be all right with it. But um, she thought that was related to roads. That's the 6883. That's the 6883 in that area. So, um, and then uh, other professional services. We had a lot of survey work done this year uh, because of our fish drainages and things along those lines. And then some, and then some property line disputes with right away. Um, so those got charged to that line um, in that aspect. So. Um, Oh, here's the, yep, so there's the 2000 that was encumbered for advertising, and they got charged as multimedia resources, so, um, up there. And then communication, that's what we pay for our conference lines and um, um, some of the, uh, the phone connections we have. Uh, we still carry a 783 number because people, um, we use that for conference line, and then people will call us on the 783, the old timers, um, so we just, we hang on to it so they can get a hold of us. And then we have a computer license and then um, some rentals. We had to rent some equipment last year uh, to supplement the contractor um, because the 
in the end, it was cheaper for us to rent it versus having the contractor provide it. Um, and so uh, that worked out well. It, and that most had to do with fish culverts. We had to get a special excavator to help with that project that wasn't in our specs. And then uh, fleet equipment rental, that is me, that's the truck that we use. And last year um, I bumped up the truck uh, rental and added two more um, just because we had the SCA interns and then we had our um, our seasonal worker um, and we wanted each of them to have a dedicated truck uh, for their work and so that's why there's more expense there in that area. Um, this is the one I'm interested in. Discounts lost. <laughs> yeah that is a good question i just saw that there and i'm going to follow up on that one to find out what that was um, because sometimes that is a accounting thing that uh, may not directly relate to us but it gets put in here and um and so well it does relate to us in a way but it, sometimes it doesn't go against actually our non-labor operating budget and so with with sap you can enter a code um, when you enter the open account and like the, what we have is called FC underscore mod and it sometimes pulls these things out and accounting is using that um, uh, for certain reasons, but it doesn't actually go against our labor, our non-labor expenses. So, and in this case, I might have, I might have pulled the um, budget up and not put that FC mode in um, to distract, to extract these type of charges here. I'll find out what that is. And then uh, the big expense with this contract is what we pay to the contractor. And so last year we only paid them 512,000. Um, we had a savings there of 87,000. That mostly had to do with the light winter we had to begin with in the fall and early winter. Um, you know, it was quite wet and warm all the way up until New Year's Eve. And so we didn't uh, work as much. And then we lost Bert and Jennifer, which were, <coughs> I would have kept them busy doing projects, but since they left, I didn't really feel in the mood to bring somebody in um, when there was not uh, uh, essential work that needed to be completed. So, um, and I knew we had some expenses in other areas, so I didn't want to use up that contract um, money. And plus, I always keep a reserve of about 125,000 for those months um, from October through December, um, just to make sure we have enough coverage there. So, so we ended up with a bit of a surplus there. And then um, our utilities um, went over this year, which is unique um, uh, because we haven't had that before. So I'm going to investigate that more to find out what happened with our public utility services. That'd be um, the heat for the garage um, over here, and then what we pay for down there to uh, um, keep the equipment warm. Uh, plugged in things along those lines. So I'll, I'll look more into that, but that was the first time it went up on us. And then, uh, so overall, uh, we had a contribution down here, as you can see. Uh, um, we made the contribution to the roads account, so that was moved, that money was moved. Um, um, but for our non labor, we were. Uh, um, uh, we had 63,000 um uh, left over there and then we had expenses down here um and then we had fifty-one thousand for direct costs modified accrual so um i don't know uh what that directly meant um in that scenario but in the end we ended up with fifty-one thousand there and then for a total for a, a final balance of forty-nine thousand surplus for the year um for the street budget <laughs> the one thing I'll look at in ITCs down here was that this is the first year that we got an IGC charge from uh, HLB for the rental of our maintenance lot down there. Um, I'm not a big fan of that fee um, mm -hmm. just because I don't feel like we're getting services in return, you know, in that aspect. We, we put all the expenses into that lot um and try to figure it out so so I, i've been a little bit more tart with them on giving us better support down there um like one as 
landlords, can you be more proactive to help us bring power to our lot? Because uh, right now we work off a remote terminal. Um, and so the equipment isn't parked on the lot in the winter and it just gets kind of messy and congested down there. And so um, I've been pressuring them in that aspect. And I kind of feel that HLB right now is in the, um, it's in the lame duck session and they're just sort of getting through and getting projects done. I think they're focusing on their priorities and, you know, there's going to be a leadership change there within a year. And so, um, and then COVID's just been a big mess. So, um, so we just keep pushing away there and trying to get things done so that we, I feel like we're getting value, even though $2,600 is not big in the scheme of things, I still feel like $2,600 $2, of services should be provided at least for, for, a, for a property that's owned by the, by the taxpayers in general. So, so just jumping back to the, um, that line direct cost modified accrual. I mean, that yeah. 51 and a half thousand is just the difference between we made 63 effectively on the contract, but uh, then paid an extra 11 for healthcare. So yeah, that's just the difference. That's between yep. yep, that's right. Excuse that's the me. effective balance. Yep, that's the effective balance. So 51,000 was the effective balance before we got to and, IGCs. Yeah, and then IGCs, so we didn't allow for the, uh, I don't think we budgeted for the, um, for the rental last year, did we? No, we didn't budget for the rental last we year. Should. The IGCs went over. Yeah, so we're budgeted for this year. Yeah, so that will make sense. Yeah. So any other questions from anybody? No. Nope. Which rental are we budgeted for now? The IGC from HLB. Oh, okay. rental of this mm -hmm. spot down by the industrial park. Yeah. yeah. So. This it seems like a bigger surplus than we usually have, isn't it? Uh, it is well. It's about within pace, I think. Uh -huh. You know, we're usually I always have a little bit larger surplus with the roads budget because uh, we just have had light winters in the fall. Um, you know, for as long as I've been here, and it was I had a laugh to myself because we basically got to finish up the budget year, and then we started a new budget year with the snowstorm, and so <laughs> didn't charge it against 2019. We charged yeah. it against 20. So, so. <laughs> But yeah, it, I mean, it's a larger surplus. It's, it's nice to have, you know, and that'll land into our, a, our undesignated account now. So okay. it also makes up, so if you think about fire budget, that's that, you know, we're down to 38,000 with this, because this is also balancing out fire. Mm -hmm. We had that lovely storm on New Year's Eve, late New Year's Eve, just a few years before, a few hours before 2020 started, but that was not indicative of how the year was gonna go, unfortunately. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And, uh, you know, we actually spent all day sanding on New Year's Eve to have it all covered up in about an hour. So. Mm. Yeah, it was unexpected. Okay, I'll switch over to the Parks and Rec if there's any, unless there's any more questions here with roads. Keep you guys moving. Okay, so here is Parks and Rec. And, um, let's see, okay. Um, so the first section is our labor. Um, we went over on labor and then I made that decision. Uh, we had a, a, a great employee last summer and um, uh, he was doing great work and I decided to keep him basically probably about another month essentially. And, um, and so he worked out really well for us and, and I knew I had some room within the budget to do it. So we got our money for, uh, for that. So um, that's a, the cost that were for straight time last year. Um, the other aspect about it is that we hire this person at um, part-time status uh, because it is easier for us to work with HR to get that approved. And, um, and then we usually give them about 10 more hours a week. So part-time status is 20 hours and we usually give them 30 hours a week. So part of that cost is uh, the extra time each week compared to what the budget is. So, so um, if the employee is mediocre, I probably just keep them at 20 hours a week, but when they're good and I can trust them and I know they can work on their own, then I, I bump them up to 30, so. Uh, operating supplies, uh, we are definitely um, under budget uh, for operating supplies. So once again, this could be chain for the swing set, you know, netting for, for the volleyball court, whatever little supplies, rope for the hand tram it all gets assigned to the operating supplies there. Um, mostly our daily uh, nuts and bolts that we need in that aspect. And then fuel, uh, 
you can see the fuel expenses down here. Uh, oh, publications, that is what we would pay to the milepost to advertise our campground here, the walk-in tent campground. Um, and then subscriptions, we buy, we pay a subscription each year to um, American Trails or something, because we have to, we, we apply for a grant, so we have to become a member to apply for the grant. We haven't got the grants, so we're not applying anymore. <laughs> And then fuel, uh, fuel was uh, uh, was um, pretty under uh, this year, that year, just because I think we had snow machine trouble this year and um, we didn't have a long winter. And so that mostly our fuel costs are associated with snow machine and then supplying our equipment. Um, so that'd be like chainsaws, weed whackers. Those don't take a lot of fuel in the big, big picture of it, so. And then uh, we had some, we bought some uniforms last year, which means we bought some t-shirts for us uh, that have our uh, logos on it. And um, we bought some gravel wrap for the parking lots here um, uh, at the playground. Uh, so here, uh, you can kind of see the expenses with uh, repair and supply that didn't get used. That's because it got assigned to, um, well, further down here, um, it got assigned to ground maintenance um what happened was is that uh we hired a local arborist josh meister and he did a bunch of work for us on our trees in town square and we did um, um, also all the fertilization and thatching and liming of the soccer field um, which the soccer field has really taken off with in in and then this year in this year's budget i included those expenses for him um, in 2020. Uh, last year we didn't have that, but after discussions with them, we decided to move forward with having him do that. So we'll, we'll continue to work on that uh, going forward. Uh, other professional services. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure what this is, but it was $5,400 and um, it might have been somebody we hired for that just was a contractor and ended up in that area. So is the uh, uh sorry is the um what do you call it uh invasive species work done under this somewhere yeah i think that's actually done under the ground maintenance services so okay. um so you know these could easily i wish i had sap on right now so i click into them but uh between these two lines here ground maintenance services and other professional services that's probably the invasive weeds and josh meister's um expenses that we had there and then just, just as a reminder the lawn mowing services were getting put into the street maintenance because they thought it was associated with streets what's environmental services then i assumed that was um weeds environmental services yeah two up at eight thousand. Yeah. um i need to look into that just to clarify that so uh what that was okay is there uh, where does the weeds, cleaning... the weeds contract is only five thousand dollars? So right, so that's I... the other professional services. Yes, probably. Yeah. What about the cleaning of the building there? Uh, that's a uh, part of the library. Oh, okay. So we don't pay for that, so the library um, uh, covers all that through area wide taxes. Okay. And then uh, donations to nonprofits. Everybody got their paperwork done. Everybody got paid out. Um, so, so, uh, that happened there. And then, um, we didn't use our advertising budget this year out of parks. Sometimes we use it for different events, but we just didn't have anything that we advertised with this year. So, and then rentals, um, we had different rental equipment uses for parks this year. And so, uh, uh that was done. Oh, I went back up here. I think the environmental services was, we had actually, uh, two emergency call out for tree removals. Um, and so we had false tree service and, and, uh, and um, tall trees come out and do some uh, tree mitigation for us, especially leading up the forest where we found a cottonwood that was really dangerous. And so we had that removed. So some of those, those fell either into other professional services or environmental services in those areas. So, um, so we had some of that. Stuff and then um, contracted services here, um, this kind of got mixed between land improvements. Um, and so we had 45,000 set aside for that. And this was gonna be the SCA 
um, guys. Uh, we lost one SCA member halfway through the season. Um, and then their estimate came in, actually ended up being much lower than their original estimate. I don't know why, but that's what they, they built us. And, um, and so the final bills were cheaper than what they estimated us to begin the season. So, so that worked out. And plus we had 45,000 um, under that contractor services, which had a little extra room for materials for the trail build. Um, but we were able to pay all that out with our, um, our grants that we had for, for the different projects we did last year. So we didn't have to actually tap any of our um, tax revenue money to pay for that. So, so we actually just paid 18, uh, rough, the sum of that 2720 and uh, 15,000. Yep. So we just paid, eight, yep, like you said, about 18. 18. Seven, yeah, seven, good value. Seven. yeah. So it worked out nice for us in that area. So, um, which, which, you know, Left, left us with a non-labor surplus of 21,000. Um, for some reason, I was concerned that we had some uh, other expenses that were gonna happen in the fall. And, um, and so I got conservative and I only moved 130,000 of the 150,000 contribution to the other fund because I felt that we might go over budget. Um, with something with some, some of our expenses, uh, but in the end, we, I didn't need to do that. I could have just moved all the money. Um, so we didn't move the full contribution. So um, that ended up leaving us there with the 21,000 and the 20,000 um, from the contribution um, in that aspect. So, um, and I think it also had to do with the labor too, because I wanted to keep the, our uh, seasonal on longer, uh, David, and um, I wasn't sure how that was going to play out in the end. So, so in the end we had a, a, surplus of uh, $38,000 for parks um, and um, and then overall we met all our IGCs. Our IGCs were pretty on and we really actually had a surplus in IGCs. So overall we had a surplus of $39,312 for, for parks. But half of that is um, a contribution we approved and hasn't been made. Correct. So 20,000 of that is, uh, so yeah. So if you look at it, we only had uh, 19,000. Right. And that contribution went to the, is going to the uh, Parks and Rec uh, capital? Yes, the 130,000 went to the Parks and Rec uh, okay. capital fund. So it's- Does it's, that it's, include the roof, the community building roof? No, we didn't, we didn't make a direct, we didn't make a uh, budgeted item to uh, okay. I can't remember. Center this year. And that 20,000, that just goes back in the general fund. Yeah, right? it goes in the undesignated account. Yeah. Gerwin's general fund, so. Yeah, we did approve it though. So, I mean, we, we asked for that to be moved. Yes. I believe, so it should, it should go into the right place. Yes. We didn't, we didn't ask for the 20,000 to be moved. We moved, we moved 130,000. Uh, I thought we, in our budget, we, we recommended the 150. In your budget for 2019? Yeah. Yes. We yeah, so we asked for 150 to be moved and. Yes, and I only moved, to, I only, and I made the decision only move 130,000 because I was worried right. about the expenses. But in retrospect, yeah. we should probably move that 20,000 to where we intended it to be. Yeah, and I think what we should do is we'll address that. We usually get our audit on our undesignated account in June. And so when we get that audit back, um, then at that point, you'll know how much is in there and then we can move that money. Okay. So uh, this doesn't include revenues. And so that's one thing I'll look into to find out where I can see where the revenues are. Um, that's something I... I, when Michelle mentioned that, I was like, yeah, you know what? They don't show the revenue line on here like they used to with the old accounting software. So. It's 5,000 or so, isn't it for the... Yeah, the and I think we're, we're pretty close. Uh, yeah. The, you know, we had some... Um, market's been really good with the permitting, so we had every $10 rental adds up, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and the campground and, and, and then the weddings that are the rehearsal dinners at the pavilion and then um <clears throat> excuse me forest fair came in i think at thirty nine thousand, maybe 4100 i don't have that in front of me but it was i remember it was one of the highest they have been had and since i've done the permitting and i think that's right. just because they had such a good beer garden year yeah yeah well that averages over two years now doesn't it so. yeah 
So, so it's look, it, that was, that was nice. You know, this year we're just not going to have any revenue, uh, yeah. unfortunately. And so we'll, we're going to have to pay attention to that, but we all also are not going to probably be doing things that we are budgeted for this year. Right. We're, we're I'm trying to work, I'm working through it right now, um, on hiring, uh, and that's quite a process that we're going through. It's just, it, yeah. So the city's working with me, but they're also doing things that they don't normally do. And uh, one is rushing a hire. They usually it's a five month process. And so they're trying to, they're trying to make it work. So they basically told me today, they said, if you know two people you want to hire, well, this hire them as temporaries. And I was like, wow, I heard that. And they're like, that's just the way it is right now. So, so we're, we're, we're working through and, we may try to find some people and then give them to HR to say, here's where we are. But, but revenues in 2020 will be pretty minimal, especially, especially our biggest revenue is Forest Fair. So, yeah. so overall, you know, between all the budgets, uh, we're looking at a surplus, um, you know, here, uh, 39,000, uh, 49,000, let's say 80,000. Lease, uh, we're at uh, 82.7, and then with fire, we're back down to uh, 72,000. So we're looking at a surplus to 72,000 for the year um, with all the budgets combined, and, um, and that falls into our undesignated count. And, and when we get the audit, um, we should uh, we should see where we're at. So. We should be a well over 400,000. I think we'll, I, I'm, I'm estimating we'll probably be in the close to 450 uh, in our undesignated account. Okay. Any other questions? No, no. That's good, good news. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Um, thank you for struggling through that. <laughs> the um, other thing, oh, sorry. Um, the other thing is, uh, and I'll just, share these with you guys. Um, let's see here, where am I at? Let me stop share. Let's go back to share again. So we just, uh, Margaret and I just produced reports for you guys on our projects that we completed, um, both for roads and for parks for uh, 2019. And this gives a summary of all the different things reason up anyways uh, those are there um, so that at least you guys have talking points when you're in the community about what the dollars are used for and what we get done and um, I think Margaret and I both take pride in the amount of work uh, that uh, we can produce with the relatively small budgets when you can look at comparisons to other communities um, we get done so um, so this just sort of gives you a summary of all the different things that uh, have happened uh in the last uh year yeah it was cool looking through i mean impressive looking through the long list of everything that got done it's like we talk about it every month we hear the report from you but seeing it all together is um that's nice it's good to see good job yep, yep. <laughs> and we post this online as a reference so if you want to look at it i think you can send them that direction i agree thank you um, okay, so I item, sorry. I was just going to make two comments. One comment is, so for roads for this next year and this next summer, now that you don't have Bert and Jennifer, they're not coming back, are they? No. So do you feel comfortable with people you have to do the projects? Uh, it's going to be, wait, I, I, I'm going to give them one project. I want to see how it goes. And so I don't even know who the crew is, um, honestly. I feel like uh, I feel like I have a bit of senioritis right now with this road contractor um, because he can't keep anybody around and trying to get things done. I mean, just for example, we're sweeping tomorrow, and normally we have two sweepers. And uh, I went to sweep last week when it was raining, and he couldn't pull it together. Stuff's breaking down. Everything's broken. You know, he's got he's got a contracted water truck today. Like the water truck is like the most simple piece of equipment we can possibly have. You, you just put water in it, you spray it out. And there were two water trucks were broken, you know, and so they had to contract out. So anyways, it's just this ongoing issues with the contractor and, um, and not having a dedicated, 
operator and mechanic here like we had with Bert and Jennifer and then this winter we had with Mark um, it, it just sort of makes me question how it's gonna play out so so anyways um, we're gonna we're gonna push through and try to I have to do uh, at least this fish culvert project because the culvert's failing so bad um, and a few others they do have a decent operator who runs the grader um, but the big thing will be is when we lay calcium and do this the spring grading um, I'll see how coordinated and how efficient they're going to be and what they're going to be like to work with. I know I have to get that work done, so so we'll see how it goes. And um, but there are a few projects that have to get completed this year. Now, what fish culvert? Are we That's what I was about to ask that. Yeah. It's, uh, so we did those. We did three over there at the um, at the uh, um, Bay Lodge, um, yeah. and there's one more that crosses right underneath Alieska Avenue. Um, road right there and, and then goes down Loveland. So all that water goes down Loveland and we need to replace that one that's crossing right under there. So, <laughs> so it's, then, it's under Alieska View. It's right under Alieska View. Got it. Yeah. Yep. And then one other thing, just do you have any uh, updated thoughts on going, uh, what's the road, Alberg, to the hotel? I'm starting to lean more towards it. Um, but I think one thing for you guys to digest is like, is that something that the service area, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna suck up a lot of the road maintenance fund, road maintenance 406 account. And maybe I'm just a little bit of doomsday on this, but I'm worried about revenue sources for Gerwood if, if the mill, if the factory stays closed, closed all summer. And what I mean by that is we're, we're a factory town with, with the resort. And if the resort really runs into hard times here, um, now that tourism's dried up and, and, and then on those things, I just wonder if other people are gonna have hard times and if Gerwood's gonna have a tax revenue issue um, coming into 2021. Um, and will we need to look at ways to give tax relief back to the taxpayers by moving money in different locations to help fund um, just our basic operations going forward. And so um, the timing right now is great. I mean, if we can afford it and we got the revenues in place and uh, we can make it happen, this is the time to do it because there's gonna be minimal traffic on Allberg this summer compared to normal years. Um, but there's a reason why there's minimal traffic and the reason, and it concerns me that we could have, uh, you know, people looking for relief and, and we're minimal in, in, in comparisons to what the school district charges, but you know the service area could do their part to help offset costs for people. So we, when you say offset costs for people or less revenue, you're talking about the resort asking for a tax break? Well, maybe, I don't know. You know, Or people who are just not paying their taxes because they're going to foreclosure because they couldn't own this, second, this expensive second home in Gerwood that they thought they could. I don't know. That's that's things I just think about us being prepared with a with a reserve to do that. And we have other sources of reserve to help balance our budgets, you know, and if we need to, we can just slash the parks and rec budget down and have minimal parks and rec and keep to our primaries. But I you know, it would be it'd be a shame to lose the ground that we've we've gained with, with those services. So the the uh, the fish fish passages were the other thing that we were talking about spending money on from uh, roads. Um, what's the status of that? Well, I think it's either or. Um, right. The fish passage, th this project it being close to six hundred thousand, if not mm. more. Um, you know, I think that's going to suck up a lot of our reserves. Uh, for so we're really take we're we taking advantage of the fact we have an extra one hundred and twenty left over from uh, the DOT, isn't it? From the DOT work. Yes, we're, well, we're taking it. We're taking advantage of that state grant that's left over from yeah. the Alberg extension, which yeah. Was, was a so that can only be spent on Alberg. Correct. So that's why so we're, we're focusing yeah. on Alberg. So we're leveraging the twenty percent discount effectively that we have this year. Correct. And that, run, that can only be spent this year. I would probably say yes. You know, I right. think in twenty twenty one, the state's going to go out and find all unspent revenue and pull yep. it back. So right. no matter what your excuse is, they're going to take it back. So. Yeah. So I think that's the argument of where is the opportunity cost. Correct. We have a we have the opportunity to do this for twenty percent less than we normally would because of the state grant or because of the state money. Correct. 
So I mean, I, I'm generally supportive of it. And as you said, this is still, I mean, the, I agree with what you're saying about the resort, but the, you know, they're, they're investing in the Nordic spa. They're, um, they're making a commitment, at least to the infrastructure on the hotel side. I don't know what their commitment is to the mountain, but on the hotel side, they're making a commitment. Yeah. So I see them as still being vested long-term. Yeah. Um, I, hope so I do too. think it is obviously going to be a difficult summer, but, uh, to some extent that next, you know, next year, maybe is the, where the pent up demand uh, gets released. So. Yes. True. When you said it would be either or on the, um, Arlberg versus fish, fish passages, yes. are those, those are different fish passages than the Alaska view one. Yeah. So these would be the Mount hood, uh, Lake Tahoe and Davos fish passages, basically the, okay. uh, the outlet of, uh, Glacier Creek or Alaska Creek. Okay. <clears throat> we've had those we've had those plans finished for a long time and we're looking at an estimate of about six to eight hundred thousand to complete those. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we, we we tabled it because we had this hundred and twenty thousand left over from the Alberg extension and we're trying to use that money and one way was to repave Alberg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean I think that's a good argument for that. I I think it's definitely worth um you know, using the money when we have it. When I think about Arlberg, there's like, there are some bad parts of it. I don't feel like the whole thing is bad, but I guess if you do it, you should do, do it all, huh? Well, yeah, I agree. Uh, we've done sections. Um, and so we won't be doing the whole thing. Uh, the, 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 uh, we'll just be doing from the service road entrance, um, which I think is, they call the pump house back to, um, the uh, intersection at Alieska Highway. And so the, the section from when you start to see the hotel down to Alberg, we've already replaced that section. And that's kind of the, was kind of the prototype for what we want to do because we just, we grinded that section and then relayed all that uh, asphalt as base material and then paved over it. And that section has done really great. Um, you know, I think we're on the fourth winter now with it. And it's cracked normally and, and and it's set up really nicely. So so yeah, we would just be doing a section going back. The I think the Alberg doesn't look that bad because we're constantly patching it. Where mm -hmm. we go out there, we do cuts, we put a patch in, and then we crack seal it, and we do all kinds of things. So um, if we truly wanted to do a nice rebuild on it, we would get in there and dig it out and then replace material. But then we're looking at three times the cost of what we're trying to accomplish here. So. So in 10 years, we may be looking at another repave, um, but we always will be unless we go in there. Because when they built that road, they did it as cheap as they could because they had so much expense into the hotel. And so they went in there, they laid a base. Um, and what I heard is they did a lot of work in the rain, and then they actually uh, ran asphalt in the rain too. So. Hmm. so I would be in favor of kind of pushing forward with it. So, you know, whenever you think we need to like prove you going out to look for a bid okay. you know, like is that the next board meeting yeah i was going to do that the next board meeting yeah. yep it, so it becomes whole be business in the next meeting yep next meeting we'll we'll finalize the cost we're working through a few things right now and uh um and we'll finalize the the engineer estimate and then we'll take it out the bid and then if something happens before I mean, you're thinking end of July into August to start, right? Yeah, yep. And I need to check in with Larry Daniels um, because they were, um, you know, they were supposed to be digging right now and I haven't seen any action over there, but I know that they're still pushing forward on it. I haven't heard different from them, so. They cleared a lot of trees. Yeah, they cleared a lot of trees. They've got the land spec. You know, they may just be waiting for things just to really dry out and then mm -hmm. move forward. I think that was the main thing, but they, they, I think things are getting there. Okay, we should move on to um, item three, which is review of GBOS nonprofit grant year end reports from last year. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I missed attaching those reports, but I have just put them into a file. I didn't know you were there. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. She's been here. We're practicing being socially. <laughs> Let me get into it here. So basically, you know, before we allow the grantees to apply for the next grant, we always do have this follow-up year-end report, which has a narrative and then also a financial element. And again, I apologize for not sending it to you guys because the rest of this packet. Um, 
person who's most interested that you all take a look at this is Lewis Leonard. He's always wondered what kind of follow-up happened because, you know, they get asked for the report and they want to know how it gets reviewed. So. Sorry, the server is giving me trouble. I can't share it with you now. You know, I think probably since I'm just getting it to you ahead of time, what we should do is add it on to our report for the next QBOS session. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do is we'll just get it to you. Uh, we'll, we can send it out today and then you guys can review the different packets and then we'll move it forward from there. So. Okay. And you said it's a report on the um, nonprofit grants, is that right? Right. Yep. Just saying what they use their GBOS funding for so that you oh. can see that what they did was what they told you they were going to do. And I okay. Down and with those particular grantees, there's, it's pretty obvious because you're all a part of all of those um, programs anyhow, um, one way or another. So. Anyway, we can make sure that you have those, and then you should just be aware that the next grant cycle opens day one, and we're still um, getting everything back from uh, the grantees for their contracts for the 2020 grant. So um, hopefully we'll have all of everybody's information next week, and we can send those over to the union to pick out some checks. So, you know, we have some grantees that may or may not be able to do with that money. You know, this report next year might be much more interesting to see what, what Valleys does with their grants, for example, for uh, our camp. But right now we just don't know and we really felt that they would need the cash one way or another. So we're, we're moving forward with making sure that those grants go up. So this year we're using, um, it's effectively the same application process as we've done in previous years where we're asking for them to specify particular programs. Correct. Yeah, because that's always, there's always been a little bit of a mismatch between what we're asking for and what we kind of know they're being used for. They're not really for, in some cases, they're not for special programs, they're for, uh, for general operating costs. Um, it, I know it's too late to do it this year, but I think at some point we should put on our uh, agenda actually reviewing, trying to match what we're asked, what we're asked, the hoops that we're asking them to jump through and what we really intend the work to be, the money to be used for. Yeah, the last time there was a really solid review of this by the uh, parks supervisor, I think was before I started here, and I think it was a pretty big process that uh, parents in the row led. So right. to better define what was going on and also define the um, review procedure and process overall just to give it more strength, I think. But I agree, it probably is time to take a look at it and um, maybe even reconsider. I think one of the ones that I always think is a little funny is Alaska Ski Club. They haven't applied in a long time. Um, they used to apply quite a bit. I think it used to be like every other year. I think they've been applying. You might see a lot more people applying this year just because of revenue. Yes. yes. But this year we still have to go under the old rules. Um, yeah. I think it, it probably makes sense to look at these reports um, and think about how we may rationalize this process. Um, and then as we go through this year, we can, we can, we're going through the old process and it might be a good again, a good uh, opportunity to think about how we can do this better or get better alignment between, because we're often asking for people to, um, to sort of say what specific extra programs are they going to do when that's not really what the money is being used for and probably not the best use of the money. Uh, yeah. So we can try and rationalize that as we go through this process and then have a discussion in the fall about how to do it better and then yeah. have those rules apply for next year. Okay. Okay, uh, there's public comment. Uh, seeing no members of the public, I'm not going to read this out. Uh, there's actually, we could, we could speak as GBOS members, I guess. So, uh, public comment, persons offering public comment must state their full name and address. Public comment is limited to three minutes per person and must be on subjects not listed on the agenda. Do any other, any of the attendees wish to be members of the public briefly? 
Nope. Hearing none. I am I am a member of the public. Yeah. I'm happy I'm happy to be a member of the public. <laughs> How's tax preparation going? No, uh, that's all called off, but I, you know, I I actually until got, July. Well, I actually got a positive test, so I was in isolation for actually 5 weeks. So now you're I, back to being a member of the public. I'm, I'm back to being a member of the public. I have an official document from the uh, <laughs> state of Alaska stating I can leave my isolation. Has your wife come home yet? No. Oh, man. Yeah. So did you, you actually got a positive test? A test that came public positive? Yeah, I haven't told you, but I, I think these other people know it. This is what's strange. I got a positive yeah. test 14 days after my fever was gone. Right, right. So there was residual RNA, but once it happened, then the state got involved and then the, yeah. my doctor says, well, we don't know. So I want you to isolate till you have a negative test. So I, I had a negative test just Saturday, so. Right, I know you were concerned that you had it. Yeah. So I'm right. very happy to be a public again. Yes. <laughs> you know, it would be nice if, if they said where those uh, recoveries were at, like they do for the positives. Yes. You know, mm. they, don't, they don't show the breakdown of mm. you know, Gerwitz got three positives, but they don't show who re recovered. Oh, yeah. Mm. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, so you can do so, some shopping for me then, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> now, you're, now you're in that category. I am actually going probably the next two days to Anchorage. <laughs> <laughs> I see a business opportunity for you. <laughs> should drive for yeah. Southernberry. Uh, anyway, sorry, we should, we should adjourn. Yeah. Yep. German. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. So, Mike, Thanks. I have a question for you, Mike. Yes. I'll get off. Did <laughs> uh, thanks, Kyle. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Did Kaylee use your model to guess the the uh, I I, gave, I told her I, I did all the numbers. We just <laughs> asked them. I had two different models or two different sets of assumptions for the so the way it works is um it uses it's a fairly simple logistic regression model, but it because there aren't that many parameters and we haven't got that much data. because um, mm -hmm. it's only been running for a few years. Um so I have two different sets of assumptions about um, future weather. So what you do is it, uh, it basically takes the state of the mountain over the last week of, uh, of um, uh, March. Uh, so the depth at 1400 feet, which you can easily get um, and the weather conditions are 1400 feet. And mm -hmm. then the, the rest of it is the projection for what will happen into April. Um, and I found two different two quite different sets of, um, I think one was the National Weather Service I looked at their projection or their forecast for the next two weeks. And uh, I think the other one was Weather Underground. I can't actually remember where mm. I got it. But they gave two quite different um, projections and it's very sensitive to what, you know, how much of the time the temperature is above and below freezing. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so I put two different, I put the, both sets of assumptions into the model and just to see what it would come out with. <laughs> and um, they, there were two different numbers that came out, a lower one and a higher one. Um, and I don't have the way I set the model up. It doesn't have a proper distribution around those. So I just, uh, so I did a few things around both means and one of my, I just arbitrarily said these half are mine and the other half were Kaylee's. Oh. <laughs> so, so it was completely random as to who got the, uh, but it, it, so one of the two models came out and it came out spot wow. on. I mean, it's wow. luck that it came out spot on. It's not luck that it was close, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the weather, the weather actually was close <laughs> to, to the, the actual weather was closer to the set of assumptions for that model. So I'm, oh, okay. kind of happy about it. I'm actually happy about it. I think it'll be more accurate next year. <laughs> but I'm you don't remember which one was more accurate which um i can't remember which it was i believe it was weather underground i got it in my notes but i, I know I looked, at, I looked at three different sites and two of them were similar and the third one was a bit different so mm -hmm. because it was different enough i thought i'll put that in and just see how the models behaved and we mm -hmm. we wanted two of those flexible cups so we had enough uh, tickets <laughs> to, uh, two, two models but the, the trick the trick is to submit them at the last possible moment because that's when you have the best forecast for them. Uh -huh. it's, very sen it's pretty sensitive to the um, to the temperature the temperature you see and the amount of rainfall you see over, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. over the two weeks or so until they do the measurement. Yeah, so. it can change can vary a lot depending. It can on vary that. a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did try last year. I tried to do something where I actually modeled the physics of. Um, of snowmelt and uh, that wasn't a successful. <laughs> this time it was just a simple 
simple logistic, logistic uh, regression. Uh huh. Wow. Actually worked out better. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. All but right. yeah, it was funny. I thought a bunch of people because it was a round number. I thought there'd be quite a few winners, but it turned out just to be the one. She was the only one. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was the only one. But yeah. I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to claim all credit. <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll tell her congrats and even though it was you. <laughs> thank you <laughs> all right normally she's the brains of most things but in this particular case it was me <laughs> well have a good night you two yeah thank you yeah and you thanks bye bye <laughs>